and to help us differentiate between that which is good and that which is bad, the Apostle Paul gives us some guidelines to help us make that assessment. In the fifth chapter of Galatians and the 19th through the 26th verse. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, your lives will produce these evil results. Sexual immorality, impure thoughts, eagerness for lustful pleasure, idolatry, participation in demonic activities, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outburst of anger, self-ambition, divisions, the feeling that everyone is wrong except those in your own little group envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other kinds of sin. Let me tell you again, as I had before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. People living that kind of life are producing bad fruit. But people who are producing good fruit are people who allow the Holy Spirit to control their life they will produce this kind of fruit within themselves. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Here there is no conflict with the law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. If we are living now by the Holy Spirit, let us follow the Holy Spirit's leading in every part of our life. Let us not become conceited or irritate one another or be jealous of one another. And those producing these characteristics are producing good fruit, and their fruit is more precious than even silver or gold. And that statement is not just a frivolous statement made on my part. No, it was made by a man who enjoyed great wealth and prestige. And yet he lived long enough to realize that prestige and money in itself was not the great panacea that he thought it would be. For King Solomon tells us in the 22nd chapter of Proverbs in the first verse, and the, and the tenth chapter of Proverbs, and the seventh verse. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches, and loving favor rather than silver and gold. The memory, the memory of the just is blessed, but the name of the wicked shall rot. Your success or failure in life depends upon your willingness to do the right thing. A life that is a masquerade of clandestine treachery and deceitfulness will eventually be shown for what it really is. And one of the great presidents of the United States, Abraham Lincoln, once said, if you once forfeit the confidence of your fellow citizen, you can never regain their respect and esteem. It is true that you may fool all the people some of the time. You can even fool some of the people all the time, but you cannot fool all the people all the time. Because eventually, they will see you for what you really are. But there is someone who sees you as you really are all the time, because even in the darkness of night, you cannot hide or escape from the piercing eyes of God. And because of that eternal truth, it would be in your best interest to do only those things which are pleasing in the sight of God. And the best example of a life that pleased God and a life that we too should try to emulate would be the life of Jesus Christ the Son of God. For like Father, like Son. And the attributes that are attributed to God are also the qualities that are possessed by the Son himself. 
For Jesus tells us in the 12th chapter of St. John and the 45th verse, For when you see me, you are seeing the one who sent me. And when I read this scripture, it helps me to understand and to see Jesus in a very positive light. And the two characteristics about Jesus that greatly impressed me was his commitment to doing the will of his heavenly Father. A mandate that's described to us in the 19th chapter of St. Luke and the 10th verse. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. But not only was commitment an intricate part of his life, but Jesus also had compassion for mankind, having lived 33 and a half years in human form, and it enabled him to experience the same kinds of emotions, heartaches and sorrows that you and I feel in our day-to-day -day living. And because of this, it enables Jesus to have great empathy and concern about our lives, our needs, and our wants. And therefore, he has no qualms about coming to your aid to help you in all areas of your life, right where you are and just as you are. And the event I described earlier concerning Jesus Christ's initial meeting with Peter meeting Peter on his own turf, right where he was, and not prejudging him, but simply accepting him just as he was. Peter was a man which the world would say was very crude and unsophisticated, but yet to Jesus, he was a man he wanted to help. For Peter was a man who would be quick to admit that he was a man of many frailties and faults, and a man who would think that uh, who would think he was not worthy to receive the blessings of Jesus. But through the word of knowledge and the spiritual eyes of Jesus, Jesus was able to see the great potential that lied within Peter. For Jesus' feelings toward Peter can be described by the psalmist in the 118th Psalm and the 22nd verse. The stone which the builders refused is become the headstone of the corner, a stone that is now an important part of the body of Christ. For Jesus tells us in the 16th chapter of St. Matthew and the 18th verse, Now I say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock, I will build my church, and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. And like Peter, when you make that total commitment to serve Jesus Christ with all of your heart, mind, and soul, he in turn will turn toward you and his protection and, and blessings he'll bestow upon you. Yes, Jesus will move to help you and to fulfill your needs in your greatest time of need. And in the case of Peter and his business partners, they had a financial need and Jesus provided Peter with the answer that could meet the need with an abundance of blessings. Peter and his men had fished all night and yet they caught nothing. But yet Jesus Christ spoke a word, and Peter and his men believed that word and acted upon the word, and as a result, Peter received an avalanche of blessings from the Lord. But Jesus is not restricted to helping you only in the financial realm, but he also will help you to receive a physical healing and a miracle that can make your body completely whole. For there is no sickness or disease that Jesus cannot heal. For this truth is revealed to us in the ninth chapter of St. Matthew and the 35th verse. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Yes, Jesus is the answer for the world today. 
for above him there is no other. Jesus Christ is the way. And today is your day of salvation. It's time for you to make a decision to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and with it will come the blessings and miracles from God. And it can take place right now. If you are willing to lift your hands with me and repeat these words. My Heavenly Father, I love you. And I thank you, Father, for loving me so much that you were willing to give your best to ensure that I could have eternal salvation with you, with my acceptance of Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I'm making that commitment right now. I'm confessing with my mouth what I truly believe in my heart, that Jesus Christ is your Son, a wonderful Son who went to that Roman cross and died for me. And Father, I greatly appreciate what He did for me. And I promise, Father, not only do I accept Him as my Lord and Savior, but for the rest of my life, I'm going to dedicate my life to following the leading of the Holy Spirit down the path you want me to follow, and I do it willingly. Father, I love you, and I thank you for loving me and not giving up on me. And for the rest of my life, I'll live seeking only to do your will. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray, amen and amen. That was all that was needed on your part to become a part of the family of God. And now you are saved and you are on your way to heaven. And we serve a wonderful, loving God who cares so very much about you. God wants to help you in all areas of your life. And what I'd like for you to do right now is to release your faith unto him. And you can do that by simply lifting your hands with me. Heavenly Father, I and thousands and thousands of other people throughout the Miami Valley, we're lifting our faith and we're releasing our faith unto you. Father, you are well aware of each person who's lifting their hand. And you can see their heart and you can tell that they are sincere. As they come before you presenting their petitions unto you, Whatever their need may be, Father, whether it's physical, financial, or perhaps an emotional need, whatever it is, Father, I'm asking that you meet their need with a special miracle that's designed just for them. And I'm praying this prayer unto you in the name of Jesus Christ. And I believe you have heard our prayer, but not only that, you have answered our prayer with a special miracle that's designed just for us. And Father, we will give you the praise and the honor that you so rightly deserve. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. God heard your prayer. And God has answered your prayer with a special miracle that was designed just for you. And all that's needed on your part right now is for you to lift your hands and begin to praise and thank God for your miracle. Hallelujah. I just want to take this time to thank each and every one of you for watching. And on behalf of myself and my sons, David and Devin Woods, we like to remind you to read your Bible every single day and then pray. And may God bless you and your family.